Welcome to Infinity and Beyond, a podcast that takes a look back at the works of Pixar animation before moving onward to their newest films. Today, we revisit Radiator Springs for the third time. Vroom vroom, everybody. It's Cars 3. The vroom vroom was not necessary. <laughs> I, it was entirely necessary. Is it though? Very. All right, who the gosh darn heck are we? I'm Daniel Hudson. I'm Nora. Grimm. Oh no, I'm Nora. <laughs> no, you you go ahead. Yeah. I'm Nora. That that's who you are, and I'm uh, uh, Ricardo Montalban. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for joining us, Ricardo. Uh, no always problem. a pleasure to have you. Uh, I on need the old a podcast. phrase to say. Y'all both have phrases I, I need i need to think wait what's, what's my phrase who the gosh darn heck are we <laughs> you i guess have... my phrase is missing link is the best movie of 2019 when have you I said mean, that on this show i mean i know your opinion is trash is like my phrase but i need like <laughs> you need a second phrase no, I need, like, like cause you do these fancy, beautiful introductions. Jiren, like, charmingly does the intro, and I'm, like, a koala in the background. I need to think of something. <laughs> That's your gimmick, though. No! I can well, do... you know, you have four, five episodes left in the year. Okay, <laughs> you can I figure can one do... out in time. I can do an outro. <laughs> yeah, why not? Anyway... Let's get aren't we supposed to, to have outro, Jaron? Aren't we supposed to have outro music that you never use? Oh, I yikes. can sing it. <laughs> I will sing it. <laughs> you know what? That'll prevent us from getting copyright striked. <laughs> Go for yes. it. Just sing uh, a song from Pixar, maybe. Um, right. Copyrights, Jaron. Not if you sing it without the music. I can sing the Ratatouille one. Oh no, here come the Disney lawyers. <laughs> All right. What are, we're doing three this week, are we? Cars three, yeah. All right. Uh-huh. Who wants to do the synopsis? Oh no, I think I know who it is. I don't have a choice. Kieran. You don't. <laughs> okay, before I do the synopsis, let me explain. Recently, I've seen this movie a lot because the um, kid of babies a lot loves this movie, but I realized as I was watching it today, I've only seen the first half like five times, and I've never seen the second half, and I didn't realize that because I was like, wait, I don't know how this ends. And it's only because every time we only get like halfway through. And I should really. Uh, start... It's the opposite of your Wally situation. Yeah, I should like start <laughs> from the middle. But so I was very satisfied with the end. This is my first time seeing the end. If I forget something, I told y'all this before we start recording. I'm very tired, and I'm also <laughs> very loopy, which is when I get energetic. And I also fell asleep due to tiredness in the middle of it and had to rewind. Not because I was bored, just I was tired. So. If I forget something, please don't judge. I was also going to write notes to be organized for once, but I decided it was more entertaining to just wing it. Yeah, well, this isn't Planet Fitness. I mean, uh, 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 24-hour gym chain, uh, a trademark, uh, because it's a no, it's a no judgment zone. It's a, we don't judge here zone. There we are. That's the lawyer friendly. It's a no judge zone. Anyway, but I mean, that's what I've done every time. So let's begin, shall we? Cars 3, Owen Wilson, Kachow. So (laughs) how do we begin? Don't tell me. Hold on. Is it I Am Speed? Is it that? Is that that how this starts or is that the first movie? That's the first movie. This one starts the same. Good. Okay. Wait, how does this movie start? (laughs) Okay. Um, it starts it's the with race. The, it's the racing montages. Oh, 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 oh! Okay, so Lightning McQueen, he's back to his good old racing jig times, and he's I am speeding, and there's his common competitors that are introduced in the beginning. They play friendly pranks on each other, and everything's fine and dandy until one day, 
Jackson Storm enters a race. And I may have already skipped something, but that's okay. And he is a new and upcoming racer and beats Lightning one day. One, one, one day. Beats Lightning one day. And everyone's like, who is this young racer man car thing? And the young racer man car thing is very rude and says some comments that are rude and sounds like he wants to push Lightning McQueen out. And then all of a sudden, all his friends are retiring or getting put or not, or getting shooed away because these new rookies are coming up and racing and Lightning barely knows who these people are. And so in a race one day after he's lost a lot, um, Jackson comes up behind him and says, you've had a good run or something snoozy like that and races ahead of him and the announcers go lightning's fading fast he's fading fast and owen wilson lightning mcqueen goes no not today and he starts speeding up but his old man crippled car body can't handle it and we have the most dramatic slow motion scene where lightning mcqueen flips over and he's totaled himself and he died and that is the end of the film yeah this was a this was a brutally short one for pixel uh yeah they were really getting experimental with that short film before each of their features (laughs) yeah Mm -hmm. i was really shocked i thought they should have won for short film this year well, anyway, in the post credits, it's a really long post credit scene after he dies. <laughs> he didn't die. And he's in Radiator Springs, and he has on this gray primer coat, and he's sitting in Doc's old shed, staring at Doc's crash and thinking how they didn't tell, they told Doc when he was done. Doc didn't get to decide when he was done racing, and he was all depressed. Then Sally comes and gives him a pep talk. And then he tells everyone, hey, I'm ready to race. I'm going to be better than ever. And he gets his sponsors on, uh, I guess, car FaceTime. That's what it looked like. And um, they're like, great. We've agreed this is going to be your best season yet. You're going to go back out there. Get them, especially after that being your worst season. But we need to do something first. Come and meet us. And so Lightning Queen says goodbye to everyone. He gets on Mac. And they ride away to this big fancy corporation place and Rusty and Dusty, his sponsors are there and they talk and basically they tell him that they've sold Rusty's to, um, what's his name? What's, what's the guy's name? The... I don't remember. He's wow. voiced by Nathan Fillion. I'm not the only one this time. Daniel, and do you remember his name? I like. Not particularly, but we have access him. to the cast list. No, nah, we're just going to call him Big Boss Man CEO Guy. So, so Big Boss. We, they it's sold a Metal us. Gear reference. They just referred to him by, is it Sterling? Yes. Yeah, it's Sterling. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I remembered Sterling. They sold it to Sterling. Sterling is a schmooze, people. This is what we call a schmooze. So Sterling, I know people like that. Sterling the schmooze schmoozes him. And is like, I'm your biggest fan. And shows him all records and history and mementos he's gathered from him and Doc's. By him, I mean Lightning. Doc's career and Lightning's like, wow, you are a big fan. And so then Sterling introduces him to his new training program wow of how he's going to become amazing there's a simulator thing lightning wants to do and he's looking at all this stuff he's like wow oh wow who is that girl that's she's fast and um is she like wow she's a good racer who is she and then sterling foreshadowing says no she's not a racer she's a she's our best trainer and i can't remember her name what is um Uh, the name cruise cruise her name is something Cruz. Um, and she's a trainer and she uses training methods. Basically, she you trains Lightning McQueen. She calls him her um her senior project. Lightning McQueen does not like that because everyone keeps calling him old. And Lightning McQueen does not adjust well to her methods of easing him into the training. She does treat him very much like a little old man, but yeah. it was okay, to ease him in. 
he basically crashes the big simulator simulator in front of Sterling and because he wasn't patient with Cruz. And so he gets in trouble, but not really because Sterling takes him to his office. He's like, listen, I think it's time for you to retire. And he has all this merchandise that he can sell once um, Lightning goes into retirement. But Lightning's like, no, I want to race. Let me race one more time. If I fail, I'll retire and sell all the, what are the little things that they keep saying they'll sell? Bud flaps. Butt slaps. I don't know what a butt slap is. Mud flaps. Mud, Mud flaps. flaps. <laughs> they do slap car butts, though, so I guess there's Mud that. Fla- Mud slaps or mud flaps? Flaps. Mud flappers. Um, they, I don't, that's not important to the plot at all. That just popped in my head because they say it a lot. Anyway, um, so, where was I? Oh, Lightning says, if I lose, I'll sell all the butt flappers. Oh, sorry. No. <laughs> I don't remember what they're called. Good. <laughs> Mud slappers. Um, and I, but if I win, I get to pick when I'm retired. And so Sterling says, okay, but you have to have one of my people with you because I want to be careful. And so Cruz is with him. And they go and train on the beach, and it doesn't work, and it's kind of an annoying scene. And that's my own personal opinion, though. And he's angry, it doesn't work. Then he sees, oh, uh, what's it called? Something Cove, Hollow, something. It's something. It's where the. Thunder Hollow, right? Thunder Hollow. Thunder Hollow. He's like, well, that didn't work on the beach. We wasted a whole day because, yeah. And so then. He sees Thunder Hall. He's like, a dirt track. I'll race there. Well, that ends up not being a dirt track. It's like a demolition derby, and there's this big, scary bus woman. But Cruz ends up winning because she's the last one standing, and they both didn't get hurt at all. But Lightning McQueen gets discovered at the end because he was in a disguise, but they get him out of the disguise. And everyone sees this Lightning McQueen, and it's a big embarrassment because he's this big racer at this demolition derby, and he gets made fun of. Basically... They're in Mac, and Cruz is proud of her little award because it was like she was sort of a racer. And um, Lightning McQueen is like, no, you ruined everything for me. How am I supposed to get faster? How am I supposed to beat Jackson Storm? And he says, you don't understand. You're not a racer. And he accidentally breaks her little trophy. And then she dramatically tells Mac to pull over. She gets out and she explains her sad life story of how she's always wanted to be a racer, but she couldn't because she's not the typical looking racer. Um, And so she became a trainer and what Lightning has said has hurt her. So she says, hasta la vista, bebe. And then Lightning McQueen feels bad because he was a massive jerk. And then this is where I fell asleep. (laughs) (laughs) Um, (laughs) I rewinded it, though, so I, I, I know, I know, but I don't know. <laughs> so, there's something that happens that makes him want to go get her. So, he calls Mater. He calls Mater, and Mater tells him something. And Mater basically gives him a pep talk. Mater yeah, he's like, talk. hey, I'm not in this movie because y'all didn't like Cars too. That is true. And um, so Mater makes the stuff happen, and Lightning Queen's like, you're right, I'm going to get back out there, I'm going to get Cruz, my trainer, and we're going to do this. Oh, I know what Mater says. Mater says, because they're saying how they wish Doc was there, and Mater says, well, I mean, I suppose the people that train Doc are better than Doc, because they're saying how Doc was the best. And so then they, Lightning has decided, oh, I'm going to go find the people that have trained Doc. Was his name Stormy, the guy that trained Doc? Something or, like did that. Did I make yeah. that up? I, I might have. I don't know. Stormy seems right. I, I'm pulling up the cast list again. Okay. Um, Smokey. That was so close. I mean, I already got one name right, so I guess I ran out of name memory, but that was pretty close. Yeah, Good that's job. how it works. Yeah. So, where was I? Oh, he goes gets, he goes gets, he, Lightning McQueen 
goes to get Cruz and he finds her driving on the road alone and he pep talks her back and he does he kind of makes fun of her little um workout thing which is my favorite part of the movie because I'm sorry I yelled it's not your fault I was almost killed it's funny you highly recommend go watch but basically she gets pulled in they go find Smokey Smokey is in this town where the Hudson Hornet dock originated there's all these racers that are big famous that are old now that raced with doc and they talk about doc and um i know i skipped the racetrack scene but it's fine um they talk <laughs> about doc and lightning's like i wish i could have seen him that happy while he was racing because they talk about how doc was amazing and did this cool little backflip thing that beat his opponents when the rookies came in, which is foreshadowing for later. But anyway, Lightning McQueen says, I wish I could have seen him that happy. And Smokey says, are you kidding me? And he goes and shows him these beautiful warehouse where all these letters that Doc had sent him after 50 years once he was happy again of training Lightning McQueen because training Lightning McQueen is what made him the happiest and it's beautiful. So basically they start training and Cruz yeah, helps him train. Like but Cruz is dressed like Jackson Storm. Well, not really dressed. They just put like his number and do like a lightning sign on her um, to help Lightning for inspiration. They train. It's basically a big training montage. They just do things that help with instincts because lightning may not be faster but he can be smarter and basically by the end of it lightning is finally racing cruise cruises as storm and he passes storm and he's in the lead well i mean cruise but cruise all of a sudden speeds in front of him because she's been doing the training with him as well and so lightning's kind of crushed because that's basically what happened last time and he even thought Lightning Queen is fading, like in the beginning of the movie, like I said. And he's real depressed, but it's time for him to go to the race. So he goes to the race, and the race begins, and he's kind of down on himself. But he hears Cruz, and he hears Smokey, or Smarky, Smokey, um, because Smokey's his uh, crew manager, head of crew, and chief of crew, something like that. And um, he's getting ahead, he's getting in the lead, he's doing good, but then... He hears Sterling over the, um, I almost said AirPods, over the head. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was well, he'd really be flexing. <laughs> over the headset. Hey, they, u- they use FaceTime in this. They do. And maybe he they hears- Skype. <laughs> he hears Sterling over the headset saying to Cruz, what are you doing here? You need to leave. You need to go back and train that, I don't know, that rookie guy or whatever. Because he's like, Cruz, you shouldn't be here. You're not a racer. You're never going to be a racer. Go back and train. Because Sterling's a schmooze and he's a jork. Anyway. Jork. Jork. So Lightning McQueen hears that. And he says, not wow. And (laughs) his... Wow. That's so not wow. (laughs) And he signals... Cruise to come back so she does a 360 and turns around back to the stadium because she was already leaving and in Lightning Queen's pit stop Cruise comes back up he's like Cruise get over here and he gets the tires to put on her and her paint job done he's like you're racing you're gonna finish it for me it, she's like but it's your last chance he's like it's my last chance to make this your new first chance and yeah so she goes out she races she's nervous Smokey doesn't want to say the random stuff that Lightning McQueen's saying that makes sense to Lightning McQueen and Cruz's relationship. So Cruz, not Cruz, Lightning McQueen becomes the chief manager, and basically he's like Doc now. And um, Cruz wins, and now there's a uh, Doc, new Lightning McQueen, Doc relationship. At the end of the movie, they're back in Radiator Springs. Cruz is a racer now. She is signed with Dynaco and Sterling has lost Rusty's to the Dynaco guy who paid a big Texas number for it. And... Texas <laughs> <This> number? <laughs> and Lightning McQueen um, wears the Hudson Hornet's same uh, makeup job? Paint job? Paint yeah, job. paint job. That's it. Except it's just the fabulous Lightning McQueen, and it's quite a beautiful moment, and apparently Owen Wilson's old now. 
I don't know. He looks the same as he did in movie number one to me, but they're racing and everyone's happy and it's beautiful. And then there's a post credit scene, like an actual post credit scene, not the joke I made earlier. Later, that makes no sense where Mater is talking about dating an ice cream truck and he missed Lightning Queen's call. I did not understand. What? But, I didn't even see that. I didn't uh, know that existed. <laughs> oh, I always wait for the post credit now. And Man, I uh, guess he and Holly. It made no sense. I might have just been out of it, but it made no sense to me. Are you um, sure that wasn't a weird dream you had? <laughs> no. No. You can go watch it. It's at the last, like, a minute 20 or two minutes. Like, I promise. It's there. Okay, I believe you. Thank you. But that is the end of the film. I didn't think I was going to be able to do it. Every time I have to do these, I can never remember, but words just come out of my mouth. It's you rough. did well, Nora. I'm so proud of you. It's a little <laughs> rusty. <laughs> wow, hey, you, you really you are. Guys the, think, the... You guys think Texas numbers are just regular numbers that wear cowboy hats? I hope so. <laughs> no, they're big Texas numbers. <laughs> <laughs> and they yell yeehaw. <laughs> yeah, and they're just like permanently in no, 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 no. mode. Three ha! Oh dear, no. <laughs> they could stop. <laughs> okay, well. <laughs> uh, that was a great recap. So. Yeah, it really was. So Thank we you. normally do the emotional uh, connection to this movie. <laughs> do, do we uh, have any? This I, I doubt it. Of the cars, I mean. I think. This this is a great redemption story for the Cars franchise. Um, yeah, it really as is. For, is. As for personal uh, investment, um, uh, I I watched this movie before I watched Cars too, actually. So that was probably oh. a good choice. Yeah, so it it feels like a much more natural continuation of movie one, and yes. it's much better to pretend Cars two doesn't exist yes because it does that's literally what it does it's just like a, this is the this is the sequel to cars they really should have called cars to like mater's adventure yeah i mean i i like my idea of um when John Lasseter pitches the idea uh lee uncritch pete doctor and andrew stanton all slap him <laughs> That would have been better. Like, boy, what is you doing? <laughs> well, I enjoy Cars original after I rewatched it. We've already been over this. But, I mean, it's still not, like, at the top of my list. But I like it. And I thought this was a very nice ending to that. Yeah, I don't really need Cars 4 to happen. Oh, no. I thought it was a nice trilogy, except the second movie had nothing to do with any of it. <laughs> But and you can make Cars Four, and it'll just be the Cruz Ramirez show, and I'll be fine with that. Yeah, sure, why not? Oh, Cause... the Green Car Show is that his name? Oh, Cruz yeah. Ramirez. <laughs> yeah, is that his yeah. name? That's her name. Wait, whoa, 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 whoa. Chick Hicks, he's back in this one. Oh, I thought you meant the oh. Green Car that is the talk show. Oh no, the I love how he's like partially the Alex Jones of the Cars universe now. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> but not uh, Cruz Ramirez, the trainer. Oh, yeah. I was thinking heard that they named two characters Cruz, but they didn't. <laughs> <laughs> Continue. <laughs> yeah. Um, so. Uh, the- I remember when the teaser trailer came out for this, and it shows the wreck. A lot of people... This drummed up a lot of, like, talk about this movie. Mm-hmm. A lot of controversy from parents who were really, really mad because their kids started crying when this happened. Yeah. It was traumatic. Like, yeah. Well, Nora, have you seen the teaser trailer for this movie? Yes. It's yeah, the wreck, it's, but it's like in it's way the more wreck like in slow motion. But in slow motion, like this one unbroken shot, and you just have lightning, like just breathing really heavily. Yes, like, I've seen it. 
And some people were legitimately asking, are they going to kill Lightning McQueen off? <laughs> yes. It's another Mater movie. Oh, no. <laughs> no imagine if, imagine if they had done that teaser, and then, and then it's just another Mater spy adventure movie. <laughs> Oh, we gotta find out who killed Lightning. So who done it? Yeah, they, they, they really Cars made three. It knives out. No. Uh, jack knives out. They really did. Um, <laughs> is the jack knife like a car thing? No. There are car jacks. Well, there you are. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, but they did made her dirty in this movie. I no, think they I did think him just fine. They did him just fine. There was just enough of him. But I don't know. I liked when he blocked Sterling from coming. That was actually really smart. Yeah, they used it's made her correctly. Yeah. I mean, it, it wasn't kind of weird that there wasn't a mention of cars too. I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> no, because Cars 2 kind of ended where it seemed like there would be no continuance of that storyline. Like, Mater could have, they, they could have easily put in a line where he's like, oh, I got a call, I gotta go on a mission. No, Bring because he says, in. he says that he doesn't want to do that. Well, it could be one of those, oh, I, I keep bringing me back in type situations, I keep telling them. Just when I think they're up, they keep towing me back in. <laughs> oh, I guess I'm a bit rusty. That was, that was bad. All of that was bad. Very bad. Yeah, I think like, cars too. like I like how, um, you know, when Lightning's just like doubting himself and he kind of wants to come home, he just calls his best friend. Okay, yeah, but that's... listen, I still have the issue that Mater values Lightning and his friendship way more than Way Lightning. more than... Way yeah. more. And I have a major issue. <laughs> it really saddens my heart to see that. Because I'm like, Mater, baby. He I've been there. Him. Oh, poor Jaren. Oh, no. Jaren's going to have an emotional anecdote about relating his struggles to Mater. No, shut up. No. <laughs> I don't really relate to any of the characters of the Cars franchise, come to think of it. Except I mean, there is precisely one good character, and that is Cruz Ramirez. Oh, uh, no, I like Doc. I like Doc, too. I mean, that's fine. You can like him, but... I think he's a good character. He's a better he's character, very standard character. He's a very what? He's a very standard character. I mean, yeah, he's um, stock. They like dedicated like a stock car. that character. This, 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 this whole movie called... really is the Doc Hudson legacy movie. Yeah, like really, they you could have called it that. My incredible joke. I'm sorry. That's no, the stock, stock car? car. I heard yeah. you. Okay. He just I'm didn't find it my... funny. <laughs> I'm going to open my soda. That sounded not like a soda. Wait, did you open two of them? No, the second noise. What was that? That was opening the soda. The it was first the one was opening the soda. That was no. ASMR. Uh, I'm so confused. You're tired. That's all. But yes, I have a major issue with the love that is shared between Mater and Lightning McQueen. Because you can tell they try to make it look like Lightning McQueen loves Mater as much. But it, they're too deep. <laughs> they can't. <laughs> they can't. They've already messed it up too much. I hate that I agree with you on this. I mean, you know, that's Cars 2's fault, though. Cars 3 was under no obligation to fix the mistakes of Cars 2. No, it's even kind of in Cars 1, because he's like, you're my best friend, and he's like, what? And <laughs> <laughs> Well, I mean, Cars 1 is the one where Lightning was an asshole. <laughs> that's profound language. Asshole. Like he hasn't been swearing the last <laughs> oh, wow. several episodes. Honestly, asshole is like one of the least profane swears I've done. The Karens are calling YouTube manager. Nora, who listens to this? Karen. 
Karen listens. <laughs> Do you happen to know anyone named Karen? I have an aunt named Karen. No, I got someone else to subscribe to the channel, though. So I noticed we have nine subscribers now. That was me. Ooh. You're welcome. <laughs> oh, wow, you made a second account. I've told other people to listen. And then they oh, can't find the channel. the channel. <laughs> I've had a bunch of people that want to listen, but they can't ever find the channel. I can provide you with a link, and you can give them the link. Thank yeah. You. Well, for a while I was saying Daniel Hudson, and then well, I that's why Danny Hudson. You know what we're not talking about? Your mom. <laughs> no, don't encourage her. She does this in real life. <laughs> yeah. So, Cars Three. Um, I mean, I, I am standing by what I said. Cruz Ramirez is the first good Cars character. Um, I disagree. I think Doc is a good character. I think Doc is a standard character. I think he's fine. I don't think he's elevated in any way. Uh, I suppose you're right. Uh, like I said, he's more I, interesting posthumously. Pretty much. I, Cruz has a much more interesting arc that's rooted in this series uh, mechanics, but it's also very applicable to real world. Wait a minute. Was that a car pun? Yes. Wow. Wow. But like the whole idea of I'm not built for that, uh, there are there are many parallels you can take from that to the oh, real absolutely. world. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. and I and it's it's far more interesting than Lightning McQueen learning how to be humble. Yeah. Yes. Or Mater learning how to be a spy. I can't. <laughs> I really like the editing. I know it oh, was yeah. slightly not slightly, very predictable that Cruz was somehow going to race one way or another. They even, from the moment they say, oh, she's not a racer, she can't do that, you're like, okay. So, you're kind of, or at least I was sort of expecting some way for it to happen, and then when they're training, she's also training. You, I just didn't know exactly how, but I, what I didn't expect was for Lightning to become the new Doc Hudson, and I loved that. So I, I kind of saw it coming, but I do like it. it it's I mean, a fitting I know most, people did. I know most people did. And, like, you could tell something was going to happen. But I know it's cheesy. I know it's corny. But I thought it was a beautiful ending, and I fully supported it. It yeah. was nice. In general, I always like the idea of the, the main character kind of becoming the mentor character. Yeah. To the next generation, yeah. like a legacy and type thing. I think I they still say... have... An element or two of surprise in it. Yeah, uh, it did. I didn't, yeah. One thing that I really expected the first time around I watched it, um, when they show the whole Doc Hudson doing the flip over the car thing, mm -hmm. like I, I would have sworn up and down that Lightning McQueen was going to get that moment later on, but they give it to Cruz instead, which was a pretty yeah. good choice. Yeah. yeah. You would kind of predict that it would end with Lightning finishing the race himself, and kind of they subverted our ex. This is the last Jedi of cars. Well, at <laughs> first, this sounds bad. No, think about it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> this sounds like it's my favorite bad, Star Wars movie. but at first I was sad um, when I heard the headset thing happening where Cruz is getting beating down on because I really wanted Lightning to finish the race because I wasn't expecting the Doc Hudson um switch to happen and I was like no don't I was afraid he was gonna like slam on break or something so I was first glad he went to the pit stop and then it went it went far better than I had in my head because I wasn't expecting that dynamic to happen so I was very satisfied I will say the Cars franchise is pretty good about not giving you a very predictable ending they always twist it a little bit you know what? Yeah, That's at least even for one even and cars three. too. Yeah. Uh, you kind of expect I mean, Mater to go off and be a spy. And, I was yeah. really mainly talking about Cars One and Cars Three, but yeah, you can apply it to Cars. I mean, too. In Cars Two, who would have predicted that Mater, uh, with a bomb strapped to his face, would have jumped <laughs> in front of the Queen of England? 
This just sounds like someone's a weirdo well, fan. That fic. entire movie is rather unpredictable because it's such a bizarro experience. It's it. I think it's. I think Cars Two might be my trash baby. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I don't enjoy it that much though, but like I, I'm entertained. <laughs> I have a trash baby, but it's not a Pixar movie. I might have several trash babies. I mean, there are only like two candidates for Pixar trash babies, and Nora and I have claimed them now. <laughs> Fair. There are. Unless someone's really passionate about like Brave or. Uh... <laughs> Don't you ever call Brave a trash baby. Oh, you know what? You can claim a bug's life. Yeah. I, okay, A Bug's Life is my trash baby. I was like going to say. Life. There we go. If, I was going to say, if you even mention Brave and like trash baby in the same sentence i will deem you as a trash baby what about brave is not a trash baby that's just excellent. trash no <laughs> what we got to do now we have to we have to have a podcast episode called uh battle of the trash babies where we all just argue for our trash baby being the best <laughs> yeah it's, well, it's that's like not a, fair that, i'm gonna lose it's like one of those kid beauty pageants <laughs> Or like all those gross, disgusting mothers who are living vicariously through their daughter. Trash babies and tiaras. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a competitive person, and like I'm gonna lose with cards too. That's not. <laughs> oh man. Okay. I'm done. Um, back to cards three. <laughs> Oh, is there any, like, background that information so mon- I should know? Uh, uh, they wanted to make Cars 3 because of money. Well, duh. Um, so this one was written and directed by Brian Fee. This is his um, first credit for a Pixar film. Uh, for directing and writing and such. Um, very similar to uh, the Dan Scanlon scenario from Monsters University. Mm-hmm. Yeah, as you cited in your video. Mm-hmm. And he will, he will be returning for another Pixar movie. It looks like. Yeah, that's right. I think he's got one set for twenty twenty one. I think that's his. But yeah, I I am certainly looking forward Excuse to me. it. Uh, Sorry, I burped. Anybody oh, who can you, make Jaren. a good Cars movie um, certainly certainly has piqued my interest as a filmmaker. Yeah, he made the good Cars movie. Yeah, Cars 3 is my favorite, I believe. Yeah, it's oh, mine as well. Down. It made a significant difference that I actually saw the ending this time. <laughs> I'm I sure. I really <laughs> didn't realize that I hadn't seen the ending. I don't know how I didn't realize that, but just don't think about it. <laughs> yeah, I, I think it's a genu- genuinely good movie. Yeah, I like it. I, like I will Predator. say... I, I do have my problems with it. I well, yeah, me too. The good Cars movie comes with the qualifier of it still has problems that come with being a Cars movie. Mm. It's like not even being the middle child. It's like I being have the... more questions about the Cars. <laughs> I... No, not this time. <laughs> I, I have questions. Uh, well... Maybe we can get to those later if Jaren is feeling up for it. <laughs> okay. But well, okay, okay, about... okay, okay. All right. My main question is car death. How? And... I. That's another. That's I'm confused. We have already pondered how cars come into the world, but how are they brought out of it? Aside from like a tragic accident. I mean, I mean, we've seen two car deaths on screen in the last Cars film. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so One like got being... crushed into a cube, and the other was filled with explosive chemicals think... and then burned from the inside out. I think the death that was PG. a lot. Yeah, I think the <clears throat> death is just like how people die, like old age or sick, some disease. car sickness or car murder. disease. <laughs> but I know we said the mileage thing. That's dating this episode. I know we said the mileage thing, but I'm so confused by the aging because if Mater truly is older than Lightning McQueen, then he is. Years. 
he should be like grandma age in this movie. And also, Lightning McQueen does not look old. You can tell. Not like, in the slightest. Oh my gosh. That he's got like a new bothered. shiny paint job. It really bothered they, me. I, they did I nothing to, to make his character look older. Um, and I, <sighs> no. I was it, very bothered. Uh, well, comparing car stuff to human stuff, um, would paint be like a tattoo or would it be like yeah. getting a haircut or it's is like it clothes. like skin? It's like clothes. No, I think tires are more like clothes. No, <sighs> tires are like shoes. Then Luigi and Guido are like those guys who are just really, really into shoes. Then, yes, sneakerheads. They're they're the call nice. it call it what you want. But like, what would the human equivalent to that be? Like, I'm sure an engine is like equivalent to a heart. Yeah, but no. One of my <laughs> major issues was that Lightning McQueen did not look older in the slightest, and I kept thinking, why are they calling him old? He looks the same as the first How movie. would you go about he, making him look old, though? Aside well, from Doc Hudson... I mean, they they made know. Doc look old. They, they're they clearly capable of making these yeah. cars feel older. Like, the fact that... because Doc was the old mentor character archetype. He was voiced by Paul Newman. Yes, yeah. but... Lightning Olin Wilson because... doesn't even, like, try to age up his voice, though. Yeah, lightning becomes. Like, there was that zero dog effort theme. into making him look or feel. Old. You're right. And, and maybe it was a joke. Maybe maybe it was just a, a running gag that falls phenomenally flat. Mm-hmm. But you get you gotta give us something here. I don't even think it was a joke because really his speeds do get slower, and he's not as fast as the new cars. So. Yeah. But at I mean, the same time, like, Cruz is training him to grab your lunch. Grab your lunch. I actually do kind of like that bit. But... but Cruz and Lightning McQueen look the same age. Yeah. They they really do not feel like they're... Like... And how is Mater not aged? He would be, like, dead. <laughs> No, okay. I think, I think Mater, it should be. How is the, the kind of model of truck that Mater is? Well, we know Stanley, the founder of the town or whatever, is dead. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So how did the granny His wife is still his... alive, though. Yeah, that's yeah. what I'm saying. How is she alive? How did Doc die before her? Well, it's all because of. Uh, I don't know. I got nothing. Yeah, it's a flaw. Yeah, that's just that's just one thing that holds this movie back. I feel another thing. Jackson Storm is annoying. I wasn't even going to oh. go that far. He was just kind of boring. Land, yeah. His design is cool. He's, he's a cool looking him. car. You don't see enough of him, but every time you see him, I want to kick out his headlight. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he, he's not. There's nothing done to make him interesting. The closest thing to like a real character beat is like when he tries to put Cruz down and Lightning mm-hmm. calls it out like, oh, you're in his head. Yeah. But it like would like all of his like dialogue to Lightning, like, like why are you picking on this person in particular? Like, why do you have such a vendetta against Lightning McQueen? I wish they had gone deeper into that. Yeah, it's... They could have done a lot with that. He's about as one-dimensional as a Cars antagonist can be. Like, Mm -hmm. Chick Hicks in the first movie. Well, they did do good with Sterling, though, I think. Because Sterling sort Uh, of is the villain. They could have done more, but they did better. uh, I don't know. I I didn't really get any... Cars 2... Francesco was at least like a funny antagonist. Francesco is a big personality, and Chick Hicks is a much better character in the first yeah. movie. He's just, he's fun. He's not like a you know a deep character or anything, Francesco. Yeah. but at least he was a fun little rival for Lightning. But Jackson Storm just has nothing going for him. Jackson Storm, I didn't really hate him that much in the movie, but like I mean, he's he dirty. looks cool. He could have been so much more interesting. 
Yeah, what if he had like a vendetta against Lightning or something, or like you know, the his sponsor was like a, an old rival or something. What if his sponsor had been Chick Hicks? You know what? That would have been great. <laughs> okay, controversial. Could have had the whole generational. Yeah, controversial opinion. Um, yeah. Chick Hicks is probably my least favorite character. Oh, that's fine. I don't think that's controversial. I don't <laughs> okay, think good. Chick Hicks fan. Yeah, don't like, worry. there's nothing awful about him. It's just I don't like his character. The reason I say in the first movie he's he's a better antagonist than Jackson Storm is in this one, simply because there's there is a motivation there. Like he's lived his whole life in the king's shadow. Yeah. And just before, like the king is about to retire, and there's already a rookie coming up who's better than him. Yes. Like, and. You see him more. Like, you barely see Jackson Storm, so you get those moments. <laughs> yeah, there's just... And Lightning legitimately worries about Chick Hicks in the first movie. He has that whole sequence about the, the, the dream sequence. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and... And, like, it's a more mature Lightning, so he's not as panicked by Jackson Storm as yeah. he was, like, when he was younger, but... I really do like the idea of uh, Jackson Storm being sponsored by Chick Hicks because that would have been like a mirror with a uh, Cruz Ramirez. I don't yeah. know. I kind of would have liked if he was a foil to Cruz by he. Well, he kind of is actually because he said I watched him growing up, but he could have taken a negative effect of it, and all he wanted to do was beat him because maybe he had people bully him like Cruz did, but then he envied Lightning for it and wanted to become a racer and be better than him so he can never be put down by people, that would have been nice, I think. Because I feel like I sort of got those vibes. Vibes. Those, um... (laughs) You know the vibes, (laughs) bruh. Feelings from it anyway. They just did the plain surface of it. Yeah, it... There could have been more. And I feel like the main focus was on Lightning and Cruz, and so Jackson Storm just kind of fell to the wayside yeah and part of this is just because of the type of series that this franchise is like there had to be a a racing antagonist yeah there there had to be a racing antagonist uh otherwise you lose stakes during the race so they have to do something but they don't have enough time to develop a person you know one thing i I, i'm sorry no, One thing yeah, I do I'm, wonder about this franchise is inter- it's international success is odd to me because racing, like NASCAR, is such an American thing. Well, not even that. It's more of like a Southern American thing. Ha- like That's fair, but you also have to remember kids love cars. Oh, I know. I'm just saying in general. I, I find it more interesting than anything. Oh. All right, I have, I have one more criticism, and then I will move on to some uh, very positive mm-hmm. stuff. Yeah, uh, I, do, there's a lot I do have good... nice things to say about this movie, but a lot of the montages, a lot of the training sequences, just a little dull. Right? Yeah. The whole sand yeah. beach thing just got on my nerves. That I part I didn't mind as rocky, much. Like... I didn't mind that as much because you can already see like lightning training crews a little bit in that moment or in those moments. That's true. But when like lightning is training in the little shorter, they yeah it, that wouldn't have hurt it. But yeah, like if... the opening races and lightning's training at Doc's old home, like they're fine. There's nothing technically wrong with them. I just I find them dull. They were going for like a rocky. Them homage i guess i think they all needed to be cut a little bit and then they'd be fine possibly really like i really think that's it because actually the one at doc's home is my favorite i'm probably fine with that link and i even like the simulator and um the whole the yoga all that things if they had just cut that a little bit it'd be better and it's annoying that Lightning won't listen to her when it's so obvious he needs to listen to Cruz, but then it wouldn't set up the rest of the movie. But it just annoyed me. It's okay. All right. It didn't annoy me that much. It just, it's just an, an yeah. uh, it, it, It's there, and it does kind of drag down the experience. Yes. I get you. Yeah. 
But on to positives. Whoop, whoop. I actually have something I noticed uh, this watch through. I didn't really pay much attention to in the last one, last time I watched it. Um, so they give Lightning like this little electronic suit uh, early on with his time with Sterling. <gasps> oh, I know what you're going to say. I noticed this. Yeah, he's... And, like, he's literally wearing a shell of himself. Yes. Yeah. It gets and, ripped off. Yeah, and the moment in the woods, mm-hmm. it rips off once he's finally attained a new state. Like, he's no longer a shell of himself in that moment. Yes. Good, I thought that was very well. I almost yeah. forgot about good, that. Good little bit of a visual storytelling there. Yeah, that yeah. was neat. On top of that, this movie looks really good. It does. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Uh, I'm so glad you said that, though. I almost forgot about that. I'm glad I said it, too. It was beautiful. And this movie does look really good. I think even even in the parts where they dull and mute the colors, it works well enough. Oh, absolutely. I can't believe we're, like, praising a Cars movie like this. It's a weird feeling. Do we need to do more say, negatives, Jaron? <laughs> no, 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 I don't think so. I'm not going to go well, say this is like a masterpiece or anything, but it's, a, despite, it's pretty solid for what it is. It is. Despite the time difference in when they made the movies, the animation between all three movies is pretty consistent. Yeah. Yeah. I think back in our Cars episode, I think we did say this that it was the first Pixar film consistent all the way through, like we didn't have any major problems with its animation Mm -mm. there wasn't the dog from the first toy story yeah because even up to incredibles i could find things to point out in the animation that weren't stellar but cars cars started the trend of pixar films looking good and holding up to the day yes like the toy story franchise is great but you can tell a difference in the animation yeah and i mean I like that for the Toy Story franchise because they serve as amazing benchmarks. Just yeah, it's like you and I said Scott. in the first episode. Yeah. True. But but with the Cars franchise, just like getting that consistency down and then building on it definitely works. Yes. Their only issue is that they were too consistent with Lightning McQueen in the third movie. And they yep. <laughs> <each up. laughs> yeah. That really was my main issue. Uh, it. And it wouldn't even have been such a problem if it wasn't hammered in so much. Yes. Yeah. It feels like every character has to point it out multiple times. Yes. The rest of the movie I enjoyed. It's just that bothered me. Imagine in real life people constantly pointing out just how old you are. I think they tried to do it in his mannerisms and it worked somewhat and... By the end of the movie, I thought of him as older just from how much he had matured and some of his behavior. Be, blah, 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 that, behavior? Yeah, and from, yes, and from some of his behavior, I felt it, but they needed a visual change in the beginning, especially. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But I saw what they were going for. Yeah, so, and they did it right. Just like I could see what they were going for in the good dinosaur. Did it happen? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> I, Poor I trash thought, baby. Hashtag trash baby. I saw what they were going for. Right. Well, Nora, you really made your mark. I know. Oh, don't. I just realized what you were referencing. No. Those <laughs> marks oh, the you. movie we were talking about like literally <laughs> five seconds ago. Nora's tired. Give her a break. Yeah, I'm actually functioning very well for me right now, Jaren. I know. I'm proud of you. You made your, you made your mark. You're doing yeah, a real good no, job. I... Yeah. Right. Um, I, I have another praise for this movie, if I may be so bold. Go right ahead. Uh, so I think this probably has easily the best dialogue in the Cars franchise. Um, with the yes. old timers talking about Doc and like just remembering the past. Yeah. Like, they just remind me of it, people I, I, I sort of know. It was funny. It was really easy to just kind of get absorbed in their stories. Uh, they felt like such, 
Yeah, I think you feel like rap car characters because you don't see enough of them. But the way they talk just kind of implied that there was a lot to them, a lot to their histories. Yeah, yeah. And that was really they good. Missed their friend. I kind of hope. Like, if, if Dan Scanlon's thing is going to be perfect comedic timing, I kind of hope Brian Fee is just, like, on point with dialogue in his next film. Yeah. yeah. And even outside of those guys, there's really good dialogue. Oh, yeah. Like, um, Lightning and, Lightning's Call to Mater, I thought, was honestly one of the highlights of the film, um, mostly because it really did feel like just yeah. two old friends, like, kind of reconciling how they wanted their lives to go this movie it's been me and you in 10 years daniel Aww. oh boy <laughs> well i hope not i hope y'all's relationship is better than that <laughs> <sighs> sorry. sorry that's the tea i hope y'all are rusty and dusty <laughs> they're my favorite characters i think they're i was so stretching charming. my back so I'm gonna they're go. so charming i have an old man back I well okay the I feel like we'll probably be Luigi and Guido, though. Yeah, probably. Um, The best thing about Rusty and Dusty is they were voiced by the Car Talk guys. Okay, this is this is really niche and obscure. I'm just gonna show them how weird I am. Uh, They hosted a radio show, the Car Talk guys, on NPR, and I love me some public radio uh, Mm. and public television. Uh, They had a, a show where they gave car advice people would call in and stuff and it's just literally what it is what it says it's car talk they just talk about cars and i don't know much about cars but those guys are just so hilarious that their show is like the most entertaining thing you could listen to aside from our podcast of course obviously wow yeah anyway yeah they they cast those guys to be rusty and dusty and i i I love that I think in this movie especially, I know there's things they could have done with the characters more like Jackson Storm, but each little character or featured character, I remember, and they did very well with them. I don't like it when I see a movie and I can't even remember that there was some small character that did this or whatnot. I like that each character has a specific personality and can contribute to the story in some way. Yeah, for sure. It was nice. But yes, Rusty and Dusty are my favorite characters. I think they're very charming. And I think it's funny when they go outside and they say, don't take our photo. Oh, well, give my good side. They're they're just so fuzzy. And I've never really noticed them until this movie. So they're not my favorite. They were in the, f- I, they were in the first, but I know they're, they're in not the in the second. I know they're in the first. I just never really paid much attention to them because i remember their scene where all the car pieces are falling apart because all i mean rest these but i like them specifically in this movie they did good they've done yeah. good off. yeah I, I like that they were willing to sell the business to give lightning a chance you know that was right? a total bro moment right there and in the credits there's a picture them. of them on retirement there's also a picture of uh, Cruz winning the Piston Cup, which I thought was a lovely little touch at the end. Oh, Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I realized, though, if you look at the... If you're on, like, Disney+, Plus and you look at the covers of each movie, Cars 3 literally has Lightning McQueen and Cruz racing side by side, and I think Jackson Storm is slightly in the background. So it basically tells you the end of the movie. Yeah. And I noticed Cars 2, Lightning McQueen's in the very front. I'm like, honey, this is not your movie. <laughs> yeah. Like, I know you're the face of the franchise, but this is not your movie. You need to step back. <laughs> they, they lied on the marketing. <laughs> That's they, for sure. They knew. <laughs> they knew what they had made. <laughs> It's not like Cars 3 was up front about what it was, what with that spooky teaser. Mm -hmm. Oh, and then Cars 1 is literally just a picture of Lightning McQueen in the red background, which is pretty accurate to his self-centeredness in the first movie, so. Yeah. 
I've decided you can read all the themes of each Cars movie from their pictures. Which I guess is most movies, but <laughs> I was tired. Of Ideally. I and I thought, wow, I could have just predicted wow. something. Oh, wow. Ka-chow. Wow. We didn't get too many good wows this movie. Oh, wow. Because he's yeah. mature. Seven out of ten, not enough wow. <laughs> I didn't feel wowed. <laughs> He, he's too mature for that now. He dot cuts in this situation. Yeah. I love I loved Doc's old friends just, like, kind of giving him shit for the fabulous part in his name. Yes. <laughs> the fabulous Hudson Hornet. We never let him live that down. <laughs> <laughs> but then they said, yeah, but he lived up to it. I was like, oh. Do we... Do, we never figure out how Doc the car died. No, they never say. I guess maybe it's like long-lasting condition from his car crash. Because they say he's never the same physically after that. Yeah. Kind of, I mean, he does He does do some speeding up in the first movie, so it's not like he's permanently busted or whatever. He does, but it takes him a second. He's a grandpa. I don't know. Hmm. Did the voice actor die that was voicing Doc? Or yes. yeah, he died before the second movie came out. Okay, that's what all I... that audio they had was actually really cool story about that. Actually, uh, was audio that Paul Newman himself was that they had recorded just between takes. They had hours of him just telling stories and stuff. Oh. So they use that in the movie. I thought that was really neat. A neat little trip. Yeah, that was so. cool of them. It was a good way for Doc to still kind of be around. Yeah. yeah. They, because... certainly used, they certainly used uh, footage of a passed on actor better than Rise of Skywalker. I was literally oh, thinking dear. of that example and I was contemplating whether or not to say it because I'm not a Star Wars person, <laughs> but I was going to say it's better than CGIing the face of a person that when he dies. Well, anyway. Uh, do we have more to say about this one? I don't really... I think we said all there needs to say. All there needs to be said, good and bad. Well, uh, we, we I are... like Fritter. I know that scene isn't, like, super necessary, but I enjoy it. It was fun. Scene. It's was fun. I like Cruz winning. She was so happy about her little trophy. I know. My Chris favorite just... part really is where Lightning is convincing her to come back. And he's like, I'm sorry. I yelled. It's not your fault. I almost got killed. And it's like dancing Get with her taped up trophy. The ram. <laughs> <laughs> um, I do wonder how he managed to tape the trophy because they don't have hands. Uh, he probably made Guido do it. <laughs> I, yeah. yeah. Th- that's one of the things I don't understand. Since he kind of has Or hands. he used his tongue. Can I say my car questions now? <laughs> All right. We'll give you three, because this is the third movie. Okay. (laughs) So, we already went over aging, but I can mainly come over that. My main question is, how does the eating process work for cars? Because, let me explain, let me explain. There's Flo's Diner, right? And they drink gas. (laughs) They drink flavored gas, which I guess is like a beverage. And you see in the second movie that they leak oil. So I'm, I'm assuming that is the urination, is the oil. But you know they eat food because Mater was like in wasabi mm, and ice cream. And ice cream. In the second movie. Yeah. So yeah. where does that go? Does that, is that just oil too? Like, and also, how is that used? And if a car goes empty on their gas, like from drinking, do they die or are they just hungry? Uh, we, well, we saw that one in the first movie. They siphoned a lightning's gas so he couldn't escape. Okay. Uh, when he ran out of gas, he just couldn't move. But he wasn't thirsty. He just couldn't move. So really, why flavor it? I don't. But what? <laughs> why flavor it if it's not a drink? It's just an energy source. 
I don't know. I don't we... know why flavor food. Uh, yeah. yeah. Well, we could be eating paste. Source. I don't know. But why do we drink things that aren't water? But if they're gonna <laughs> eat food, why not just give them water? But they give them gas, so I feel like there shouldn't be food. And they're gonna be up front on this one. Gonna be up front. I don't think John Lasseter really considered the world building implications of cars. I don't. I don't understand. And I think trying to decipher it is not going to go well for you. I still don't understand why there was a miniature buggy that time. was a bug. What? Uh... Yeah, I think you've used up your three questions, Nora. We answered two of them, at least. I, I, I still don't understand how they age. I, uh. Nobody does. I, um, you just kind of have to accept it. But also, how do they use the bathroom? It still, it still blows my mind that Mater is like 50 years that? older than Lightning. And now Lightning is getting okay boomered by a younger car. I, I don't understand. And I don't understand how they use the bathroom. I know there's a lot of bathroom scenes in cars, too. But I still don't understand. Does it all just come out of the tailpipe? And is it just oil? I don't, I don't understand. Yeah, that's the kind of questions we make podcasts for. I don't, I, Nora, I, you should just make the Cars Query podcast. Where every episode, really. you just send emails of questions to John Lasseter. But these are really paining my soul because the more I ask, the more confused I get, and the more questions I think of. <laughs> well, nobody ever said the Cars franchise was good. Why? Why do they have teeth? <laughs> why? Well, there's the ever persistent question of if you open up their doors, will like guts and organs spill out? I don't think so. I think it'd just be a car. And I'm still mesmerized by the fact... Why are there doors? Like, they don't seem... When they race, I feel like they should be out of breath. Because that's, like, the equivalent... Lightning was breathing hard earlier in this movie. No, but they have, like, full conversations while they're racing. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Like, I'd be like, do what? (laughs) On my little headset... Well, you know, the Pixar theory could probably answer a few questions for you if you want to look at it. I thought we were were done talking about that. The Pixar theory? No, we still have to figure out how Onward fits into the Pixar theory. That's the greatest question of this podcast. I don't know, Daniel. I can't take these questions that don't make sense without answers and I I don't I don't I can't. I have a feeling I know how they're going to wedge onward into the Pixar theory. How? It'll probably be before Monsters Inc but after everything else. Of course it like, is. This is what the world looked like before the last of the mutated humans died off and only monsters oh, creatures I- <laughs> I still don't understand how they did the good dinosaur in there. The, the the theory is that everything in the Pixar theory happens 65 million years later because eventually those dinosaurs go extinct and are replaced by humans. I, yeah. But humans and dinosaurs weren't on the Earth at the same time. And I know the asteroid thing, but what about the Ice Age? What it's about solar flares? And also, their theory's wrong. There's a human in the movie. <laughs> like, like that's like a main character. <laughs> I never said the Pixar theory was good. <laughs> Just that it exists. I, I, I spotted a flaw in that one there, friend. Um... <laughs> Honestly, I think Pixar at this point is just choosing projects, doing everything they can to kill the Pixar theory. Like Dance Canyon's just so. like, I want to do a suburban fantasy film, and they're like, done, kill that theory. <laughs> yes. Well, um, 
I think we should do our final thoughts on cars. I have to yeah, sing my it's... outro song. Well, that that comes at the very, very end, Nora. I know, I know, but I'm just thinking. That comes later. That comes later? Later. Mm, no. <laughs> Good job. I feel like I'm starting to get sick. Like, over the course of this podcast. Oh, this whole day I don't feel good. But, like, over the course of this podcast, it's I feel every like I'm time we sick. Mention, every time we mention Mater, he gets slightly sicker. It's the curse. My soul has been bound to references to rusty old trucks. I like Larry. Larry the Cable Guy guy just takes years off your life. (laughs) I like Mater. That's how Mater is secretly immortal. He is. That's my Pixar theory. Okay. Uh, Before your final thoughts. um, It's good. I like it. I think it is good. It is not without its problems, but it certainly shows a lot of promise for Brian Fee, and I can't wait to see what he does with his original film. Cruz's best car. It's my favorite in the Cars franchise. I like what they did with the characters, and it made me go, oh, wow. Wow. Wowie! Did you just did, did We're you not. Just, did you just We're try to make not. Wally and Cars <laughs> come together? And I made an abomination <laughs> out of two abominable movies. All right. Well, I've been Daniel. I've, I've been Jaren. Dang it! I just you guys did it again. Ending. <laughs> Just go, Jaren. Say who you are. <laughs> I've been Jaren. I've been Nora. And join us next time for Coco. Wait, okay. I thought you were going to sing. Wait, I've got to sing. Yeah, Nora. Now, now's the time to sing. Okay, hold on. Um, this has been our podcast. It was quite fun and it was beautiful. Please like and subscribe and make us YouTube famous. Thank you. I love it.